Okay, so let's complete the subnetting lab. We were told that previously, network 192.168.1.0 slash 24 was broken up into four subnets to support the various subnets in this lab. So we have 192.168.1.0 slash 26, 64 slash 26, 192, 26, and 128, 26. So going back to my calculations, we had 192.168.1.0 slash 24. We created four subnets. We used this formula to get the subnets. To remind you, two to the power of n minus two is used when asked to work out the number of bits required for a certain number of hosts. With subnets, we don't have to subtract two. So two to the power of n was used, which gave us four subnets. So the formula two to the n or two to the power of two was used. We only had to steal two bits from the host portion for subnets, and that gave us our three subnets. We've now been told to subnet the subnet further. So in the lab, we've been told to break up 192.168.1.64 slash 26 to support as many subnets as possible with eight hosts per subnet. So this network, 192.168.1.64 slash 26, needs to be broken up to support as many subnets as possible with eight hosts required per subnet. So the formula that we're gonna use is two to the power of n minus two. That gives us the number of hosts that we require. So if we work through that, two to the power of one gives us two. That will only give us zero hosts. So that's not enough. Two to the power of two minus two gives us two hosts, also not enough. Two to the power of three minus two would give us six. Two to the power of three is eight, minus two gives us six, not enough. Two to the power of four is 16, minus two gives us 14 hosts. So that is enough. Two to the power of five is 32, minus two would give us 30 hosts, and we could continue with that, but we already know that this is the number of hosts that we require. So we need four bits in the host portion, which would give us 16 combinations, minus two, one for broadcast, one for network, gives us 14 hosts. So this is what our original subnet looks like. At the moment, this is the network subnet portion, and this is the host portion. We only require four bits for the host portion so we can now move two bits to the new subnet portion. So these two bits, which, which I'll put in green, are gonna be our new subnet portion. There are no spaces once again in an octet. This is a full octet. So zero, one, zero, zero, followed by four zeros but I've just split it to make it easier to see. Host portion is four bits, subnet portion is this. So if we work out the subnets, we have to go through the various binary combinations, which would look like that. What you can also do if you wanna save time is this is 128, this is 64, this is 32, this is 16, so you can just add 16 to 64 to get to the next subnet, so that would be 80. And, and just to verify that I've done it right, 80 in decimal looks like this in binary, notice 0, 0101 0, 1, followed by four zeros, that's what we've got there. And then you can simply add 16 to that, and that would be 96. 96 looks like this in binary, 
which is the same as what I've got here, 0110, followed by four zeros. And then you can simply add 16 to that again, which should give us 112 if my math is right. 112 looks like that. So zero followed by three ones, followed by four zeros. So those are our new subnets. We've got four subnets, each supporting 14 hosts. We only require eight hosts, but we had to use an additional bit because three bits wouldn't give us enough hosts. We'd only have six hosts. So we've had to use four bits in binary to give us 16, a less two, which is 14 hosts. We have four subnets because we have two bits. Two to the power of two gives us four subnets. So we've created four new subnets from that single subnet. So we could allocate the subnet to our new network. So this new network would now be 192.168.1.64. And it's no longer a slash 26, so I need to update that. It's eight plus eight, 16 plus eight binary bits, 24 plus four, it's 28. Or if you prefer, we originally had 26. We've added an additional two bits to the subnet portion, so slash 28. So this is now slash 28. Now, before I configure the network, I just wanna make sure that I've done things right. This network needs to change now. That's what we used originally. What we've been told to do is use the last new subnet you got from 192.168.164 slash 26 and use that with slash 30 masks. So we need to take this subnet and then we need to subnet it again. So this is the new subnet that we want to break up as a slash 30. The reason why we use slash 30 is two to the power of two minus two gives us two hosts. A WAN link, such as a serial link, only requires two IP addresses, IP addresses on each side of the link. So we can steal two bits here for the subnet portion. So that would be network. This would be our new subnet and our host portion would only consist of two bits. So that would be the first network. It's a slash 30 mask now. Next network would look like that. Just go through the binary combinations. So in decimal, that's a four. So it'd be 16. 20, 24. And we could once again verify that by using a calculator. So 112 looks like that in binary. 116 looks like that, which is correct. 120 looks like that. Notice zero followed by four ones, zero followed by four ones, followed by three zeros. Again, there's no gap here in an octet, I'm only doing that to make it easier to read. 124 looks like that, and that's also correct. So what I'll do is I'll firstly configure the WAN links because they've changed now. This WAN link needs to be 112 slash 30. 112 slash 30. So this router needs to be configured with the first IP address in that subnet. So show run and the serial interface needs to be changed. So interface serial 010, IP address is 192.168.1.113. First IP address in that subnet, it's a slash 30 mask. OSPF neighbor relationship has come down Routers require that they have the same subnet on both sides 
for them to form an OSPF neighbor relationship. Show run on this side. This IP address needs to change. So interface serial 01 slash 0 IP address 192.168.1.114 slash 30 mask. Ping 192.168.1.113. Ping works. You can see that the neighbor relationship has come up. So that looks good. So on router one, neighbor relationship has come up again. Show IP route shows us default route via 114. In other words, this router is seeing this router as its default gateway or, or gateway of last resort. So ping cisco.com. Can we still get to Cisco? Okay, on this router, IP domain lookup, IP name server should be quadruple eight. So ping cisco.com. Maybe a, another problem packet tracer. Let's see if this router can ping the DNS server. Yes, it can. Can it ping cisco.com? Name has resolved. So internet router can ping cisco.com. What about router one? I was just impatient there. Notice it can ping cisco.com and can it ping facebook.com? Again, it can. So I can save the configuration. I've now successfully updated the internet router and router one with the new subnet. Next thing I need to do is configure a subnet on this link. So this will be 192.168.1 and I'll choose the next one, which is 116 slash 30. So notice how I've taken one original subnet, this one, and I've broken it up into these three. This one is being used now. So I can't use that anymore because I've subnetted that into these four subnets. But there's nothing stopping you taking one subnet and subdividing it and then subdividing it again, like I've done here.